Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here Hold with on. Peterson okay, Electric. Fine. Got my glasses on, my gloves here. Um, we went ahead and figured out which phase was going to kill the other side, L1 or L2. This is L1. We pulled it out and the light bulb went out from here. It does help with the second hand. So uh, the tenant here used to be an HVAC forever, so he's really familiar with power. So anyways, I got this turned off. And then I hit that knife and turned it back on. Now, as you can see right here, that was a knife disconnect with no fuses. Power comes up, goes to the transformer. There is no overcurrent protection. That's why it's not doing anything other than arcing inside of that disconnect. And you can see on that lug, I had an extra amount of load, but nobody's home here or the other house, so it really shouldn't be doing that. But once I figured out which leg up here was causing that out of all six, it ended up showing me that which one was going to actually um, get rid of that extra resistance. And so keep in mind that there is a fault current and we do in 210.19 talk about um, our uh, voltage drop. Funny thing is that I didn't have a major voltage drop until you'd kick on your loads. But then again, the whole entire house of siding would become more energized as you do that and you might feel more of a tingle. Sometimes your best method, and you may not agree with this, especially people with OSHA or anything, but the best method I have a concern is I'll go like this. And if I feel a tingle through here, it's better than through my heart. Sometimes you can just put a little water on your elbow and just touch that. But then again, that's closer to your heart. I would do it on my right versus my left. But sometimes that's going to be your best method. Because what if it's 80 volts? Well, that light bulb's not going to light up if it's less than typically 90. But on that right there at 120, it will. So anyways, this is energized right now. You could just use a simple wiggy. This kind of gives you an idea since I can't get into those bugs. I don't want to unwrap them all. So it was showing me that this was the one I left on and this was the one that I cut. Now I've got that one back on. And out of all those legs, I was able to isolate which one? Now be careful while you're trying to figure that out if you're doing this hot because of the fact that if you get your elbow on here and touch here, that is energized. So that's what I was my biggest concern. I, that's the same as the light bulb. That's kind of like me watching out of the corner of my eye too. So as soon as I touch this one lead, this is the lead coming into this gooseneck, boom, there it is. This house, I went downstairs in the basement, has knob and two. This house was built in probably 1895 or 1900. It's 110 years old, minimal. Um, we got a light fixture there. Who knows if that could have energized it? Because there is no grounds in the house. Article 230.250.130 uh, uh, talks about our EGC grounding and our branch circuitry as, all, as well as 406 uh, in your plugs. Um, but anyway, so right here on the side of this house, we've got to figure out what to do. Um, my suggestion for this gentleman is to probably do a total gut, redo the house. Uh, all knob and two, some of the oddest wiring down there with the splices. And uh, basically right now, we're gonna to try to figure out how this is energized. The next thing I'll do on a video is probably a continuity test. All right guys, thanks for joining us. Shut her down? Yep.